Hello friends. It is with a great joy that we begin day 15th of Moment of Harmony. We need harmony every day. And you and I know that days can go by easy or hard. It depends. Some days are easier than others and that's why we need moments like this to recharge, to reset, and begin anew. We are living in a world in which we are evolving together, and it's not simple, it's not easy, but it is possible. And accepting our humanity, we can start fresh and begin anew each and every day. Euripides verse Anulfo, knowing as an educator that we are here on the earth, to evolve, to progress, and to help one another, he knew we needed messages as true lessons to recalibrate ourselves. The nourishment of the spirit, as he says, is serenity and peace. So here goes in our introduction a reflection that was brought in by Chico Xavier once. He said, then once Emilio came to him and said, Chico, it is great charity to avoid friction. It is great char charity to avoid friction. So if you know that friction is gonna happen at some point, avoiding sometimes that encounter that meeting is going to be beneficial. Sometimes we force ourselves to levels that we cannot bear. So we need to know our limits and know the limits of others and not cross that boundary. Be respectful. Our guiding model Jesus, according to question 625 of the Spirit's book by Allan Kardec, Jesus is the guiding model, and if we observe him, he never imposed himself onto anybody. And in many ways in his life, until before the crucifixion, he gave room for people to whom to be whom they wanted to be, and he would go his way. He didn't agree with the Pharisees in the way they were doing, so he didn't go there to the temple to fight, and he let them do what they wanted to do. He also allowed Caesar and his team to administer however they found appropriate. And he, in his own way, he left the legacy. In the eyes of many people, he was a nobody at the time. I will repeat it. In the eyes of the greatest names of the temple, he was nobody. In the eyes of Caesar, he was nobody. In the eyes of God, everybody is important, but Jesus is undoubtedly given by God to us on the earth, our God and model, and in that life, he was the guide and model too. He didn't change. What does this tell us? That our guide and model are teaching us a lesson. Sometimes in your family, you will wake up to the things of the Spirit and your family won't. Let them be, but be whom you need to be. Let them be, but be whom you need to be. Let them do, let them do what they need to do and do what you need to do too. Not doing things because others disagree or not allowing others to do what they think is appropriate because we disagree is not helpful, right? Right, Dulce? You spoke to your daughter about boundaries and boundaries can be very important, but it doesn't need to be spoken. It can but it doesn't need to be. Like Jesus, he left his city and he became a pilgrim, literally a pilgrim, 
traveling, talking to people, healing, teaching. Very unconventional in many ways. And he kept doing what he had to do. Not interfering, not um, influencing, yes, but not interfering. And the same shall we do. Tonight, Professor Euripides Barsanufo is going to invite us to work with the Master. What does that mean? You're going to be working with the unconventional Master. He's a different Master. He's not a Master that walks like everybody else walks. He doesn't talk like everybody else. He doesn't feel what everybody else is feel. Hmm? There's a beautiful song, I know in Portuguese, not in English, I'm not acquainted if there is a version in English, but it's a beautiful song. I don't know the whole lyrics, but it says, Amar como Jesus amor, love like Jesus loved. Sonhar como Jesus sonhou, dream like Jesus used to dream. Yes. <laughs> Falar como Jesus falou. Speak like Jesus spoke. So tonight, Professor Deep is going to invite us to work, work with the Master. He is different. He has a different approach. His, pro his proposal is unconventional. Yet in the world, it's pretty much unconventional. And we're being invited to do this work. So Professor Deep Barsanufo on June 5th, 1955, psychographed this message through the medium Corina Novellino in Sacramento, state of Minas Gerais in Brazil. He says, Beloved brothers and sisters, peace to your hearts. The work with the Master still is your greatest call of opportunity in this world. Observe the benefits that the activity of the workers, the activity offers to the workers of the Lord. All the factors of spiritual progress are concentrated in the great work represented by the task. Put the tools in the hands of youth and you will have the blossoming of the miraculous tree of discipline and progress. Give proper occupation to people, and you'll be preparing the ground for future harvests. Take care yourselves of the labors that circumstances bring, and you'll be projecting the lights that will brighten your future home. As the work is done with joy and loving care, you will build. You will be building a tower of love and you will raise it so high that there will be no force that will overthrow it. Remember that the foundation of your happiness resides in these principles that the spirits, our enlightened companions, tirelessly provide to you. May Jesus help us. Euripides Barsanufo. Short but to the point. The point is, as Emmanuel says in the introduction of the book, Paul and Stephen, you and I were called personally by Jesus. Ah, Bernice, I don't remember. So it's a good exercise to recall. There is a moment he called us personally to work because this planet was not built by you or me. Think of your house. You work. You pay the bills. You build the house or you rent the house, but you organize the house. Somebody comes to live in the house and they have no consideration whatsoever to who pays, who coordinates, who maintains, and who prepared it. What do you think? So next time somebody says, I don't believe in God, I said, okay. Did you create yourself? Uh, I don't know. I don't care. Well, 
It's, it's time to think about it. It's time. We can no longer afford, we're not going to impose, but depending, if it's our children, we need to boost that rational. All the time. We're not imposing, but we're inviting. And if we have an opportunity, give back the question to the people. Ah, oh, but I need a proof. No, your reasoning is the best way to prove to you what you're looking for. Nobody is going to prove to you anything. And the work of the Master is also to invite us to work with Him. And that's the beauty of it all. Right, Kira Correa? Yes, that song is really adorable. Right, Elsa Leal? Amar como Jesus amou Sonhar como Jesus sonhou Viver como Jesus viveu Sentir como Jesus sentiu. I don't know the rest of the lyrics, but it's a beautiful song that invites us to follow the guiding model. It is possible. It's not that far. It's the proposal of humanity. It says Emmanuel in the book Living Spring. Real humanity, right? Real humanity. I agree with you, Elsa Leal. It's a wonderful song, right? Mm -hmm. We will repeat it, every single phrase of this message, because it's striking, Rudy, and thank you for asking. The work with the Master is the greatest call. The work with the Master, the greatest call. There is no other thing more important. But what does it mean, work with the Master? Forget your family? forget your work, forget your self-care. No, it's to bring that proposal everywhere in the family, at work, in our self-care, in our relationships, everywhere. For example, there were people who were inviting Jesus to greatest things. One day, some disciples brought some people who were pretty influential socially and politically speaking. And they said, look, this is this person, that is this person. And didn't, didn't, Jesus didn't say anything. He didn't reply. He didn't say a word. And they left thinking, maybe he's not the Messiah. How often people are going to invite us to things that are simply a waste of time. And the Jesus attitude would be simply not to go. Oh, but they are my friends. Yeah, but if it doesn't fit your ethical, moral standards, we shouldn't go. Like one day, a little child that I know of, I was telling her, look, maybe one of these days, you know, you should try this tomato sauce. And then she turned to me and said, you know, mom, Jesus made my body such a way that sauce is not healthy for it. I said, okay, <laughs> not for your, but for healthy for mine. But you know, I respect, I respect. It didn't fit for her only for me. That's okay. It's valid. But that's what happens to us. We can kindly, like this child, tell our friends, you know, I love you as a friend. I love you. But that thing, smoking pot, you know, snorting cocaine is not my thing. Sorry. Drinking is not my thing. Just water. But I love you as a friend. And I think you could love yourself a little more and I'll go there. Because certainly addictions of all sorts are alarm, are an alarming behavior saying more self-love, more self-love, more self-love. And this is not a judgment. It's just diagnosis. So we would say drink lots of self-love every day how through affirmations 
through self-care. Go for a massage if you can. Take a shower and use a, a perfume that you use, an essence, a, like a, a particular healing essence that is beneficial to your body. Um, go dress up in a way that you find more caring for yourself. Eat food that is more, that is healthier for you. From the care of the body to the care of the spirit, there is a multi-dimensional range of actions that can boost self-love. And you can work from spirit to matter, matter to spirit. It doesn't matter which way, as long as you take action into boosting self-love. Whenever we go towards the impulse of death, as Freud said, we need a whole lot of impulse of life to uh, counterbalance it. And addictions in general are unconscious or conscious investments of the impulse of death because they are destructive. And to counterbalance it, we, we need a whole lot of uh, impulse of life, of law of preservation to really boost it up, okay? Thank you, Valeria, for being with us as well. So friends, Professor Lips Barsanufo is saying, the call to the master is a whole lot of life for us. Think about Jesus is passing by. And as Jorge Godinho Neri, the current president of the Spiritist Society, the, the Brazilian Spiritist Federation, and the person who helped us in the past here, he used to say, let's not forget that Jesus sends like a horse and it's sealed and you have to mount it. You need to be ready to mount the horse. Are you ready to ride it? Because when he calls, we need to be ready. So he says, observe the benefits that the activity with the Christ offer to each and every one. What is the benefit of working with the Christ? You sleep with clear conscience that you're fulfilling your duty. You feel love because you're being loving. You feel strong because you're being determined in these beautiful works of the good on the earth. There's so many benefits. And when you work through the proposal of the Christ in your family, in your relationships in general, at work, in the Spiritist Center, and in the Spiritist Movement. Let's not forget, our dear Emmanuel told Chico, sometimes charity is to avoid friction. And avoid friction means don't go there. Let people speak their minds. Sometimes you're going to find people who are going to write posts on Facebook. You disagree. But remember, they are entitled to their freedom. God allowed them to do it unless they are hurting the general good, then we take action. But it's, if it's their free expression of how they are feeling in life, who are we to say anything against? Or to take action and say, Put this post down, who are you, blah, blah, blah. We can't. And that's us. And that happens more than we imagine, especially in families. You know, a cousin writes a post or a family member talking about something and we're judging or feeling judged. Who cares? Let them do it. It's the law of justice. Respect Question and answer 875 of the Spirit Book by Kardec. People have the right to do what they want. And justice is to respect people's rights. That's why God is just. One of the attributes of God is to be just. Hmm? Yes, but there are laws. People can choose as long as it's in the range of the limitations of the natural laws. 
like the physical laws, there is a law, the law of gravity. You can jump from uh, a hill, but you're going to hurt yourself. But you can. But you are going to hurt yourself because there is a law of gravity. It's going to pull you down and you may hurt yourself. God is not being sadistic saying, I want to make this law so people fall all the time. No, there is a reason why the law of gravity is, necess gravity is necessary on this world. It's needed. So we just need to learn the dynamics of the laws of life and respect it. That's all that is. And that's the harmonization of ourselves. Then Professor Lips Personovo says, all the factors of spiritual group progress are concentrated in the great work represented by the task. So we are going to evolve spiritually when we on the earth harmonize ourselves with the call to work with the proposal of Christ consciousness. It's inevitable. That's why he says, put the tools in the hands of youth and you will have the blossoming of miraculous tree of discipline and progress. Congratulations, Professor Deep Zversanufo, because the current world is doing the reverse. We're like, no, you can't do it. You can't. You're too young. You don't know. Youth is just to entertain yourself and enjoy life. And here we have the problems we're experiencing nowadays. Behind a lot of a drug addiction, there is bad education at home and in schools. Because the spirit that has previous vices found loose lose educational issues so they still maintained that addiction of all sorts i'm saying addictions in vanity addictions in sex addictions in types of uh, physical drugs moral etc of all sorts so what is the solution benjamin franklin has been telling, and I'm going to share with you, through Kardec Radio's um, uh, works, that we need to bring apprenticeship programs in our spirit centers. Bring the youth and children as apprentices. Give them the title of apprentices. And bring them, for example, take the children and take and sign up as they are apprentices of how to give the water in the passes, how to organize a room with the teachers in the educational activities, how to bring flowers to the center. If you are the apprentice of bringing the flowers in the center, we are going to coordinate the teacher and that child with the parents of the child to coordinate a little vase of flowers to be brought to the center that week and many other different types of apprenticeship that can be done in a spiritist center from children to youth right sergio and thus we will be boosting this youth Euripides Barsanov is an educator, excellent educator. So he never put aside. He would trust his students so much that he would tell them, now, in the school, Ellen Kardec, right now, I count on your holding of the current, we say in modern words, your concentration, because right now I need to get into a mediumistic trance and visit somebody who is in need. He would go in a trance and be steady, quiet physically. The students would be quiet, holding the current. He would go do what he needed him to do and come back. Can you believe it? 
because he trusted the youth. Nowadays, teachers don't trust children or youth. We look at them undermining their potential. No wonder problems are happening. They feel left aside. They feel they are not important. They feel they are to no use. We trash them. They learn to trash themselves. Drugs, alcohol, sex, etc., etc. No wonder. Vanity, right? Teresa Kasuin, poor living skills passed on generationally. I agree with you. I agree with you. So, the apprenticeship program can be very interesting in a spiritist center. You know, we are organizing ourselves to implement that uh, recent idea in our center in Virginia, and we're sharing it with you because that's a uh, food for thought for all of us. And Euripides Barsanufo says more, give proper occupation to individuals, everyone, young and old, young and older, we would say, younger or older, right? Give them occupation and be preparing the ground for future harvest. We cannot withhold. I know spiritual centers where they keep like things to a few and people come and they feel like because of that need of power, they're like, no, I don't trust that person. But come on. Think of Stephen in the book, Paul and Stephen. He didn't meet the master in, as an incarnate. But Peter became so open-minded that when he recognized in Jeziel, later Stephen, the potential, he opened the doors for his works and he became the leading healing medium and I would say the leading speaker of the house. Sometimes I see people who come to spirit centers and they have beautiful potential, but we're like, no, 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 but you just started, okay? I've been here for 10,000 years and you just started. So you have to wait 10,000 years until you do what I do. That's pride. It's good to recycle. It's good to train everybody to do everything at all the time. New people come in and little by little they are getting in and it depends on their effort too. But we need to have this openness, openness. That's why in no group, spiritist wise, we should um, we need to be very dynamic. Jesus is very dynamic. He trusts in you, he trusts in me. There is no, a friend recently used this expression, I like it very much, like spiritual pedigree, like when you talk about the, you know, having that curriculum, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It's by effort. It's not by historical achievements. Okay? So take care of yourselves of the labors that circumstances bring. And you'll be projecting the lights that will brighten your future home. So today, you and I, right now, are sowing seeds that will be harvested tomorrow. Not only for ourselves, but for many. So think about this, instead of looking behind and saying, man, my karma, my problems, look ahead and say, the past is gone, bless it. The present and the future are right here in my hands. I'm boosting my future as I speak. Right, Victoria Baker? Is there a spirit center in New Jersey? There are many spirit centers in New Jersey, Victoria. You can go to the spiritist uh, uh, spiritist.us website to get a hold of their addresses okay and sunshine is saying i was wondering how to incorporate our two 
11 year olds into our meetings better. There you go. The apprentice, the apprenticeship program. It's inspired by Ben Franklin. He is a big fan of apprenticeship program so we can bring people with us. That's how he, he became who he became in that life and he believes in it. Professor Olivier Barcelona does so. As the work is done with joy and loving care, now this is the difference. If we do the work with joy and loving care, okay, you will build a tower of love. You will raise it so high that there will be no force that will overthrow it. In our spirit is sent in Virginia, we don't allow complaints to go around, okay? Nobody complains about anybody. No, we don't. We talk, we don't bring, uh, place uh, ironically because we need to do things with joy and loving care, friends. So that's the call for tonight. And it says, remember the basis of your happiness resides in this principle. That's what the superior spirits have been bringing to us, friends. So homework for the next 24 hours. Let's do things with joy and loving care. And until tomorrow, friends.